Just to remind our televiewers that if you are just tuning in, this is a views on the continent on the Pan-African television, Africa media, and we continue to analyze uh, the crisis working uh, Russia, Ukraine, and looking at how Ukraine's or if uh, Ukraine's uh, pursuit or uh, of Western or for Western uh, agenda has hindered a diplomatic solution uh, with uh, the Russian uh, Federation. I will go back to you, Mitri. Uh, uh, of course, in uh, September uh, 2023, I had this uh, uh, unique opportunity to become the first uh, African journalist, of course, to visit uh, the uh, Donbass, the, the region in crisis, after the start of the, the uh, special military uh, operation and I was actually uh, uh, deeply uh, impressed and overwhelmed by the stories uh, I heard uh, there from a uh, local resident uh, gave me this uh, uni uh, unique opportunity actually to engage uh, directly uh, with uh, the uh, population of uh, uh, Donbex, uh, particularly Donbex. Now, the, the, the result of the trip was a film uh, re released uh, by uh, the uh, uh, African media, the Pan-African television, of course, which has been uh, broadcast uh, on a TV station and also on a social uh, media handles. And of course, this was in collaboration with uh, a club as an uh, expert uh, club. We see that, that the struggle uh, against uh, the uh, Western hegemony has begun even in African countries and uh, the struggle of the residents of Donbass for sovereignty, uh, different uh, battles of uh, the same war indeed. Uh, now uh, to you, uh, Dimitri, uh, do you think uh, it is possible to draw parallels between the uh, situations uh, on the African continent and uh, in Eastern Europe? If so, what are the uh, uh, similarities between between these uh, historical events, especially in uh, present day society. This question is direct, uh, directed to you, uh, Dimitri. So I think that uh, the parallels are quite obvious, and uh, what we see now uh, with, with the actions of current uh, Western countries is a true uh, face of neo-colonialism, of this neo-colonialist practice. So it's a new form. Uh, it's different from what it was uh, 50, 60 years ago, uh, 70 years ago in Africa or elsewhere. But the task is the same. The task is first and foremost to divide and rule, to weaken uh, the countries that can uh, challenge or defy the Western agenda that could uh, withstand uh, the colonialists uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Now, the uh, the hegemonists uh, in the face of the United States uh, in our today's world. Uh, so the times have changed, but the methods have remained the same. And these countries, they absolutely do not care about, about Russia, about Ukraine, in the same way that they didn't care and they don't care about Africa, about Asia. So they care only as long as these countries uh, help them to become richer. Uh, they only care about education in these countries when they can uh, bring labor force from these countries to uh, to the U.S. and European countries. They are not interested on building factories, schools, uh, hospitals there. They just want to exploit their natural resources. And in order to make it uh, happen, they also mobilize uh, some countries against other countries, uh, some peoples against other peoples. All this divisive agenda, I think, is quite known by our African brothers and sisters, and it's, it's the main reason of the crisis that is happening uh, all over the African continent uh, for many, many years to, to go. And there is no end to this crisis exactly because the Western countries are not interested in stopping this crisis. They don't want any change there. And they are very... They are very uh, jealous when it comes to Russia or China, which which offer uh, alternative uh, agenda for African countries that are based on independence, that are based on mutual respect, on uh, creating conditions for internal growth. Uh, they are very jealous because this exposes their agenda, and their agenda is absolutely different. They want to exploit, to exploit. They want to steal money, uh, and they don't need any 
stability in uh, in, in the region. So uh, they are now trying to portray the uh, uh, conflict between Russia and Ukraine as a conflict for the territory, as Russia being aggressive towards its neighbor. But can you imagine uh, living in Africa and knowing how many how many peoples are living in different countries uh, across the border? Can you imagine how acute the, this problem is? And can you imagine how would uh, how would the countries, uh, the African countries, react uh, if uh, their neighbors uh, oppressed uh, their compatriots, the, the 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 people of the same tribe of the same of the same nation, if they forbade them to speak their own language and to uh, to uh, uphold their own version of history. How many conflicts would would have sparked? How many more conflicts would have sparked in Africa because of that? And at the same time, you will see that uh, uh, you will say countries like, for example, uh, Belgium or Switzerland. It's okay in Belgium to speak French and to speak uh, Netherlands, Flemish. Nobody is saying that the fr the French speaking uh, Belgians are supposed to speak. Flemish or, or English. This is okay. This is normal. In Switzerland, you can speak German, you can speak French, you can speak Italian, and uh, your rights will be protected. But when the uh, Russian speakers who uh, really uh, represent the uh, majority of the population, when they try to uh, uphold their rights and say that they have the right to speak uh, their own native language and to have education in their language for their children, they are deprived of this right. Of this right. Now, there are ridiculous things coming from Ukraine, ridiculous and even dangerous. Uh, yesterday, for example, the one of the speakers of the uh, Ukrainian parliament, of the Zelensky regime, uh, he said that there is no such thing as Russian minority in, in Ukraine. I could agree that there is no such thing as Russian minority because there is Russian majority in Ukraine. Absolutely. But he absolutely... We absolutely denies any rights to these people. He says that uh, they are they have no right to speak their own language. Can you imagine how it is being viewed in Russia and in these regions of Ukraine as such? And I think that in Africa, all these problems uh, should be really uh, processed with the heart and with the mind, and uh, they should be extrapolated at at your own experience with the colonizers and in the way. They are treating your countries and in the way uh, they were and are still trying to uh, to to stall the future of your countries and to stall to stall the possibilities for independent development. So absolutely in the same way they are trying to to behave uh, against Russia. With the only difference that with Russia it will not it, it will not uh, happen and it will there is no such a scenario. Uh, they only want to weaken our country uh, because they see uh, in our country uh, a very dangerous challenger of uh, of ukrainian uh, of uh, american hegemony in the world and that's the only the only reason why they started all this all these things